So, uh, Relja, welcome to hey. FACE. Really, Hi. Well, can very you nice hear me? To, yeah, I can hear you. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too, Dale. All right. So, uh, uh, did you bring anything uh, that you want to talk about? There's a screen share option here on Zoom at the bottom. Yeah, okay. let me just uh, find where you that to, is. You just scroll it at the bottom. You'll see the green box. Okay, <laughs> no, that's your video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, share okay, screen. Did you want to, yeah. Share screen. Yeah, the okay, bottom. screen one. Share. Yeah, okay. There you go. Well, there's your Twitter page. Okay, there's a. Uh, we're looking at uh, what DAX now. We've got okay. about. Looks like you do some very uh, interesting, intricate work. So, Relja, uh, where do you trade from? Where are yeah. you? Yeah, let me introduce uh, myself properly. I'm coming from Serbia, and uh, okay. I know that uh, most of uh, Western people cannot really pronounce my name correctly because uh, you, you said Relja and. Uh, Everybody calls me Relja, you know, from uh, UK right. and from America. Is it, and is it, it silent? Sounds, is it, it just Raja? It sounds like it sounds like I'm from Pakistan, you know. But uh, <laughs> actually, 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 it's uh, it's Relja. Relja. Uh, okay. Yes. Got yes. It. Uh, it's easy. And that's that's why on Twitter, uh, yeah. on Twitter, I call myself Stray Dog because uh, I know that uh, Western people can pronounce. That, but uh, it's not uh, it's not because uh, you know I want to be anonymous or something because on my okay. website you can find everything there is to find uh, to be found about me. So I'm not okay. hiding, but uh, the the name is maybe you know a complicated thing for Western people to pronounce. Okay, so, really, yeah. I got it now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about you before we get to the markets? It's always uh, interesting for me to hear how people got involved in in trading. Uh, mm -hmm. What were you doing before you you got into the markets and became interested in trading for a living? Uh, well, uh, I, I I can really uh, be sorry that I didn't find find trading before because as I started trading with my when I was 40 years old. Okay. And uh, be, before that, uh, I have been uh, in, involved in various uh, jobs. I worked in the, at one of the uh, trade unions um, okay. as a uh, computer person, you know, to, right. to teach others how to use Windows and Word. And uh, I used to work in the newspapers as well. My late okay. five father was a journalist. So I started to work by uh, on a scanner first to scan photographs for the newspaper. Then I started uh, to work uh, as a graphical gra graphic layout guy. Yeah. At the end, I was a chief uh, graphic editor in one of the most popular women magazines here in Serbia. And uh, when I was there, uh, I also worked for another news ag agency in the evenings. Okay. And that news agency had a special uh, newsletter on, on English. On last pages, there was like a report from Serbian stock market. Okay. And uh, I was working with one guy. He was an economic journalist. And uh, just like that, he was not there anymore. So I'm working for months and months with some other guy, you know. And at the end, I ask, okay, where, where is Miroslav? <laughs> Where is that right. first guy? I was working with him. We, we, we became friends and we still are. And he said, uh, Miroslav said he wants to be a broker. So now it's, he's a broker and he's made like a bunch of money and so on. And then I asked, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what he did do? <laughs> Where is yeah. he working? So that was in 2004. And my right. first, first trade was in uh, 2004 in August. I bought some shares of a company here in Serbia, which produces a kitchenware and uh, boilers. You know? Yeah. And uh, that it's period- a great story. Yeah, that period, you know, like in, in, in the US markets or like in ad, other stock markets, that period between 2004 and the, the great financial crisis was basically all up. You just yeah. buy dips and uh, you make sure 
because on the Serbian market back then and now is the same. It is a long only market. It's a extremely a small uh, turnover there, a small volume and non, non liquid, not, non, not liquid market. The biggest mistake a man can do there is uh, to be engaged in something that you cannot sell, something in, totally liquid. not liquid, and then yeah. you're stuck and your position is you can you can count, count that as, as a zero you know, <laughs> because, right. the, because you cannot sell it. But it was for me and uh, for uh, other people involved back then uh, who knew how to find uh, uh, cheap stocks, it was a paradise. And uh, a few years later, uh, brokers where, where I had the account told me that, you know what, really, you're, you're talented and you should uh, go to the, our own SAC to finish the course for, for brokers to get that education and to work with us because you can find those um, you know, undervalued stocks. So I did that and I, then I have worked as a stock broker for Serbian market for four years. Okay. So, Were you, was that a lot of asset collection and uh, making cold calls to get clients or were you on the trading desk there? Uh, I was at the trading desk, but uh, stock broker in Serbia is a bit of a different thing than, you know, the, the, than what we can see in U.S. movies. Okay. You know, because uh, on one, one hand, we were treated like uh, from the em employer treated us like we were some uh, uh, clerks in the post office. You, know? you just yeah, you, right. you have, you have right. your stamp, you have your stamp, <laughs> you know, and you then make contract with the client yeah. and uh, take their orders to the market and you put your signature and you put your bang, your stamp on it, yeah. and that's yeah. your job. And uh, right. plenty of people took that job like that. You have a yeah. fixed pay. It was a similar like the postman in the post office. Yeah. Really, uh, nothing much like a very... Your boss wanted average. you guys to mail a lot of letters to generate yeah. commissions. It's, it's, it's yeah. an average. It was an average pay. And uh, a few of us were really uh, into the market. The, the, uh, you know, the people that were trading for themselves and right. that were into the market, into the... Uh, all, all came to fundamental analysis to just to find the companies that are uh, profitable and to be able to dig out those, those uh, uh, earnings, uh, not earnings reports, but more like financial stuff yeah. uh, before others. And if you right. do I'll, I'll, that... Yeah. So, uh, you know, I see, you know, uh, here we're looking at uh, your evolution. Uh, did you have any major influences that uh, 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 or books that you read for learning how to chart and use candlesticks it, and fids? It, and it, it's it's that? very interesting that that first period of my trading, that first few years, which was only fundamentals and only through scanning, you know, the data of the companies, uh, I didn't even realized that I'm doing the things that much, much later I have find out, found out that uh, Mark Minervini, for example, is speaking about. He's speaking mm. about making the turnover to go in, go out. I was very active uh, in, in trading. I did made a big turnover, but uh, I didn't even realize that, hey, that guys exist. I didn't even had a, um, you know, a reason why to check U.S. markets because our market was a paradise. And then all of a sudden, it was not just all of a sudden, of course, when the great financial crisis hit. It was a slower process, but at one time, it was like somebody just turned off the light and that light was never turned off again. I sensed that in the autumn of uh, 2007, in uh, October, I told my clients and uh, the people of which Imani was uh, managing that uh, I'm going to close slowly everything. Uh, at first, they did, couldn't believe. They, some of them called me a coward. But at the end, uh, be, even before there was a really you know, big uh, drop on US market, our market already was uh, having a hard landing. And yep. then, then it was too late. Right. Because, because nobody could 
nobody okay, wants so to you, buy. <laughs> you avoided that. Did you avoid the COVID crash? Uh, I I avoided I avoided the, the 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 GFC, but I avoided that by losing. For example, I lost like a third of because uh, euro was going up, uh, Serbian dinner going down. We had. Uh, we had lost like 20% just on that. Everything was the Serbian dinners. But when you calculate your portfolio, you are obviously going to calculate that on some other currencies and euro is the number one here. So right. we, lost, we lost on the debt front. Then we lost uh, because stocks were, went down. Then taxes were, were, went up. So everything was basically <laughs> against you. Yeah. So, uh, but... Uh, you know, when you are when you are losing money, uh, if you made money before, then you are losing from your gains. But if you uh, entered too late, like in two thousand and seven, for example, we had lines of people, literally lines of people in front of the brokerage every day, and yeah, you watching see, it. Yeah. And yeah, and when you see that the guy has the newspaper. You know, under his arm, you know, he's yeah. carrying the newspaper. You know what he's going to buy. He's going to buy the stock which went twenty percent higher the previous day, because right. he thinks it's just going to go higher and higher and higher. You know. Yeah, like and the yen, bu- U.S. dollar yen. Yeah, a b- b- bunch of people bought in the wrong time, and they are still stuck. All right. So, well, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, what uh, did you read? Some books that taught you how to trade technically, or yourself? Taught? Yeah, uh, m- mainly, you know, uh, when when all of that gone and crashed, uh, I thought about uh, moving on because there was nothing really to do more on Serbian market, both uh, stocks or bonds, and uh, I wanted to be a, like a citizen of the world. <laughs> so I uh, thought, let let me uh, go and learn technical analysis primarily on uh, dollar pairs, and forex, and euro dollar, dollar yen, and so on, on the things that are most liquid. So I right. found a trader. I will call him because he's not uh, trading anymore. I will call him Mr. B. And Mr. B was a trader, Serbian trader for a small town in, uh, in Serbia. And he was very good. And he told me some, he, he taught me some of the basics of technical analysis. And then I nice. moved on myself, you know, on, um, okay. on the patterns and uh, uh, most of the things that I'm now uh, dealing with and teaching others is uh, technical, is classic technical analysis, like Wyckoffian principles. Um, and the, most of that I have uh, teach myself. My favorite book, for example, you, you ask me about books. My favorite yeah. book is uh, Trades About to Happen from uh, David H. Weiss. Especially, especially the parts about false breaks, about splings and uptrusts, because those are the ones which uh, we, the DAX traders, are dealing with on a daily basis. DAX is uh, a, yeah. in my opinion, old school instrument, which uh, often lacks volatility or strength to make a bunch of real breaks, and in often just makes marginally higher highs on, or marginal lower lows and goes back to the range. So majority of our opportunities are those fading the ranges. Okay. So uh, uh, I see you use FIBS and, uh, you know, yeah, some moving I, averages here. So uh, what are you seeing this in is, DAX? This is, yeah, this is uh, this is daily chart uh, right. uh, behind. This is uh, cash, this is index, this is futures. So, uh, I'm not really a big fan of the moving averages, but I am using it on uh, daily charts. So industry standards, daily 50. Uh, DAX closed yesterday at daily 50. This is today. This is yeah. daily 200, this red one. Right. Um, and I'm using that as a uh, gauge of a strength. And uh, as I said before, DAX as a, uh, in my opinion, old school instrument. It, it is reacting quite good. Why do you think it's an old school instrument? And uh, would you say that of all the stock indices, uh, it's more old school? Why is it more old school than, say, S&P? Yeah, uh, S&P is old school also, but uh, not 
I think, yeah, I'm biased, you know, because I'm training okay. mostly ducks. Obviously, I'm okay. biased. But, yeah, uh, I just want to know but, why. Uh, you uh, know, on you're the not SMP, the only one. On the, S, on the S&P, which uh, when we are talking about ES, S&P futures right. as the most traded futures in the yeah. world, where everybody and their mother is using the market profile and right. all of the modern stuff, you know, AD line and uh, everything. The ETF, uh, the spiders. Uh, yes. All, all, um, yeah. They, they're, they're, it, it makes sense then to join the crowd and to use what everybody else is using. Um, on DAX, there is uh, less volume. And uh, DAX is very, uh, it's very responsive to the common zones. So, okay. for, for example, I will show you my zones, for example, for today. Let's go on futures because I know some people are allergic on CFDs. <laughs> but, uh, but in Europe, uh, many of the traders are using CFDs. Uh, okay. So this is, this is the futures on DAX. And uh, okay. this, was, this was for today. My usual uh, um, coloring, uh, this orange box represents the pre-market range. And uh, DAX... Uh, actually didn't have a pre-market range for many, many years like uh, US markets have. It only got the extended hours in December 2018. Up to that time, pre-market for us was just between 8 and 9 a.m. And from 10 p.m. down to 8 a.m., there was nothing. Now we are having, so now it's a uh, uh, summertime and it starts at 2.15 a.m., and up to nine, we have the pre-market range. Then I like to extend that rectangle to the right to see later how it responds to it. So uh, this is now a very small uh, picture, but uh, you can see how, for example, this is 915 candle and yeah. how they poked above that range for a bit only to go yeah. back inside. But right. This is not a really a representative uh, example because the re reaction here was very small. But this is something that it does regularly, almost every other day. And uh, those kind of setups that are connected with pre-market high, pre-market low violations of those levels, uh, we, we, uh, we got them from the S&P and from NASDAQ. Okay, so it's like an opening range trade. Yeah. You go with the because, break. Because you, you, you see, when, when market is trending higher, yeah. And uh, it offers only like shallow pullbacks. You, right. you're, you're going to see, especially on S&P and NASDAQ, how they're just making a dip toward the pre-market low. Then they dip like two points below that and boom, higher. And they're making that same bear trap over and over again. And when time passes by, you ask yourself, but how come you know, people don't see this? <laughs> Because I, I'll tell you why you know, a lot of people don't look at five minute charts. Like yeah, you do. yeah, uh, maybe that's the They're case also because uh, because I'm I'm a day trader dominantly. Okay, but, uh, well that's that's why you do. So you know uh, that's a difference. You know a lot of people are discouraged from looking at short term charts because uh, they try and swing trade off <laughs> five minute charts or fifteen minute charts, and it's a scalping time frame don't you agree yes yes okay. oh, but i think people need to know what they are it is very yeah. it is very um it's very hard to mix both you know to be yeah day trader and swing trader in the same time i think it's better to you know for for a trader to just decide what he or she is and sometimes um making a move from a day trader to swing or vice versa or just uh Changing the instrument can do wonders for you. You know how you turn a day trader turns into an investor, right? Yeah, I know that because uh, I have seen that. I have seen that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to to uh, tell you a little uh, anecdote. Because I've for, done it. From, from yeah. Everybody has done that. Sure. Sure. Uh, Two-minute yeah. anecdote. I'm coming right. to my work. I'm working at that time as a prop trader. And okay. there, there is a position on DAX open on my account on futures. And that position is down like 50 points. So I'm asking my boss and the owner of the company, what is this? He said, I made it. Yeah, I said, yeah, I know you, you made it, but the position doesn't have a stop loss. The idea, what is this? 
So he said, I wanted to scalp, I wanted to take 20 points. Okay, you wanted to take 20 points, but now the position is down 50 and I still don't see a stop loss and it is on my account. So he said, he says, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry, you just trade mini futures instead, just leave that. Several days later, we are closing that position for minus 500. Yeah. Why because, did he put it in your account? He was your boss? Yeah, but his account was already stretched, <laughs> you know. All right, because that's why. He, yeah. he, had, he had many positions on yeah, other don't. stuff. When it, people say, don't worry about it, I really get worried. How about you? Yeah, me, me also. <laughs> me also, because... But, but you know, uh, I, I see that with, my, with myself and with other traders as well. Okay, the ego in trading is always, you know, uh, yeah. high and the vanity is high in trading. Everybody yeah. knows everything the best. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, Hubris, yeah. Yeah, but uh, if, if you are not able to cut down the loss, as Ed Sikota said said uh, back in the time, you will oh, yeah, going Ed. to meet the mother of all losses. Yeah, he plays a great banjo. You ever hear that song that those guys do? <laughs> no, no, but uh, I'm yeah, sure they, I can find a, it. He was in a band and they did a kind of a market song that's yeah. uh, it's really good it's like my generation mm -hmm. so you're a day trader uh yes the I'm, a, is... I'm, a, I'm a day trader and dax is my bread and butter okay uh, got it beside dax i only trade uh, um a few times per week s p and nasdaq and only when they are when they're moving when they're not in the range when the volatility is slightly bigger and I, then i can find some uh, easier setups for me uh, because i uh, i go up at 6 a.m central european time three three hours before the open to prep the the charts to to make a preparation plan and everything and then um uh, U.S. Uh, markets open at 3:30 uh, p.m. and by that time, uh, I need to make a few breaks to take a nap or you know, to to be yeah. ready for that if I'm going to trade it at all. I also have a family, so I cannot really trade all day up to 10 p.m. and then I take usually a few trades on S&P and Nasdaq per per week, and I'm trading DAX every day. Uh, I also pay a great attention on. Uh, correlation between DAX and the S&P. And for example, this here, what we, we had here, these few days of uh, yeah. market uh, uh, staying in the range, basically accumulating before this uh, push uh, higher, uh, the same was on the S&P, but S&P was laying here on the halfback of this uh, up move while DAX was on the 48.2 and NASDAQ was at 61.8, okay. for example. Okay, so um, it was showing relative strength compared to the U.S. indexes. Yeah, yeah, you, right. can, you can yeah. you can tell it like that. I like to not only to look at docs uh, like this, like the index and futures, but also to to. Uh, oops. Uh, so, do you yeah, have okay. a business model, or are you just trading your own account? Do you teach? Do you have a letter? Um, uh, yeah. Why are uh, you on Twitter? Why are you on Twitter? I was on I was on on Twitter. Uh, First, to share some charts and to see what uh, others are, are sharing. Uh, and uh, when I started uh, to share my uh, stuff uh, and to make some recap videos, I had like 700 followers, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen that uh, people were liking my work and uh, that there is basically nobody back at that time, or that was like three years ago, who is offering some kind of newsletter or some kind of uh, you know, subscription service or something like that. And uh, I thought, let me try to do this. It could be a way to you know, pay my electricity bills or something. Uh, because this is a small niche. Uh, this is right. not something that everybody is trading. And uh, there is a lot of, lot of uh, services and other stuff on for S&P, for U.S. stocks, where, where everybody is, basically. Uh, there yeah. is not a big uh, interest in DAX, but there was for this, and I am successfully uh, having a, a service for like three years. Okay. And, All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was a pleasure meeting you, Relja. Yeah. That's, that's like a... Uh, additional income uh, for me.
yeah okay. but uh, basically nothing can really uh, nothing can really uh, make uh, bigger boxes than this yeah. all right well Even, uh, you know a great yeah it was a great story uh thanks for sharing your journey with us today and a uh, couple of looks uh uh, will DAX make new highs or put in a failing top? And since you're a day trader, that's not the right question. So, uh, yeah, but uh, you can see this and you can make a parallel between this and the uh, US Russell 2000. It also okay. had a 10 or 11 month range. And mm -hmm. once they broke down, for example, this, let me just uh, turn off all of this. And we can see with our bare eyes, this was a resistance. Now, uh, I'm sorry, support and, and here uh, made to a resistance. And uh, Russell had the same thing on the very same day. But before, for example, DAX had this, what people like to call golden yeah. cross, Russell did that like months before. Yeah. Although DAX they, looks they like are, it could have 15-2 in it to me. They, they, they are not correlating, but yeah. you can see you can see some uh, connections between the patterns itself. And that's why I think it is a good idea to monitor, always to monitor US markets, especially S&P. And uh, for your question, when we had this, it all, all uh, it already broke the support before the uh, before yeah. the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which which happened around here. So it was already was making lower highs. It was already here. Uh, these moving averages were converging and it already made lower highs. It already uh, started to repeatedly test that uh, support. And everybody, everything was telling that this is the next thing, especially because Russell already did that, all of that. All right. All right. Well, uh, well if, you know. I uh, think he, he, if it is holding here, it could attack again yeah. this level and then we are going to see what's going to happen okay I'm going well, to sell you, know, <laughs> you, you ought to change your handle from stray dog to pedigree <laughs> yeah. all right so uh, anyway you know uh, you're not a stray dog because uh, they're out there they're just eating garbage and sounds like you know, you graduated from the university of hard knocks and uh, you know how to trade now so um Congratulations, and everyone who's seen this live or the video later can follow Relja at uh, at Stray Dog, even though he's a pedigree. And yeah. since you and since you survived an interview with me, you're now my trading warrior brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I like to talk a lot, so. I well, have you, you back? Then. I think you 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 survived. <laughs> you survived. I survived. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I, I guarantee you, I've had. You know, I stepped on a few landmines in my day, and that's yeah. my mission to help people avoid doing the same thing. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So, uh, thank you for your time today, and good hunting. Uh, I'm rooting for you. And uh, what do thank you think? You, you, you know, you haven't done many of these. Uh, why don't we give it another go later in the summer? Yeah, sure. Okay. I I, I did it. This is my first interview. You did I mean, great. First, uh, first with, with the strangers. It's a good thing you're uh, you're you're not shy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm All not right. Shy. <laughs> okay, everybody. That's a wrap. Follow him. Uh, I'm going to tell me if I get the name right again. Rail. Huh? Raya. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah, anyway. it's huh? a good it's a good try Maybe because by the next can... interview yeah. i'll hit it Ray, yeah you yeah. can call me you can call all right. me all right Ray, call yeah. me straight up no, no Ray, yeah and <laughs> yeah. uh thank you very much for being here and uh was nice meeting you and thank you for having uh, me yeah we'll, we'll do it again buddy all right okay okay that's a wrap everyone we'll see you tomorrow and the week tgif good hunting the rest of the day uh, and you could join the team on the morning edge in 13 minutes. Remember, don't just count your pips or your DAX or your spoos. Count your blessings. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. You're very yes. welcome. Adios, amigos. Hey, traders. This is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.